I bet you thought this set breakdown would come out at the end of September, late once again, but nope, I'm only like, what, a week or two late this time? I think it's just a bit over a week, maybe. Hello, welcome, VBTO5 set breakdown. This uh, set has a lot of support for a lot of clans, um, some clans get a lot less cards than others, but we're gonna look at it. Um, this is actually the set where the silver and colored markers come in. Uh, I said that for the last one, but that was a mistake, I just like... I don't know, I just confused it, that's literally my fault. But anyway, uh, this set is quite special because of those like insert markers and also just a lot of interesting decks uh, came to be. So if you didn't see my meta analysis yet for this set, I recommend you check that out because you can see how the decks are doing uh, after the support. But without any further ado, let's just get into it and look at all the clans from my least favorite to most. So we're going to be starting off with Nubatama. I don't think that's a big surprise to most people because I'm not too big on this clan. Um, it is cool and I mean mechanically it is still very cool. But we're gonna go over it. There's only eight cards to look at, so it's not that much. Not as little as Azel, but I mean, not as much as the other three. So we're gonna begin with the VR that is Jamyo Kongo, already restricted in premium and hasn't even released. Uh, well, before releasing in English, it has now released, finally. But so Jamyo Kongo is Vanguard Circle when placed and at the end of each turn. Your opponent chooses six cards from their hand and discards the rest of the cards from their hand. So they choose six to keep and the rest go away. But if you have a grade 3 in the soul, then your opponent chooses 4 instead of 6. So they can only keep 4 cards, everything else goes away. But this is obviously very strong in premium, with stuff like Rinne, because Rinne can force you to call those last couple cards, and thus ripping your entire hand away. Like, technically, the Crow was already kind of doing that, just with a much harder condition, but now, I mean, you basically don't get to do it as easily as Jamyo Kongo allowed you to. This skill has no cost, it's literally just like, when placed, do it at the end of the turn, do it. So it's really, really strong. It's honestly a really, really strong skill. Um, so it's not that surprising that it got restricted when I thought about it more. But in standard, this card is good, but it's a bit slow because it's a bit unreliable to get um, a grade 3 soul charge. So you kind of have to wait for turn 4 um, just to do something that's not very offensive. It's just very much just... I mean, it is offensive in the sense that it depletes your opponent's hand, but on grade 3, right, they're probably gonna have like 6 or 7 or like 8, so they're losing, what, 2 cards? Obviously that's bad, but they can counterplay play it, so it's like they just commit a bit more in the early and have, don't have to worry about the skill anymore, and then chances are, if you're playing against the meta deck, they are either already beating you turn 3 or beating you turn 4 uh, if you, like, you went 2nd or something, um, so this card is a bit too slow for standard in order to be that good so that's a bit of a problem um it does have quite a few nice support cards in this set that we're going to take a look at but i think as things are right now it's a bit too slow nubatama is getting more support with the shin series uh because mark does use the clan so we're going to see more nubatama coming up very soon but sadly jamia congo not as good as it could have been up next is the iconic bear Tamahagane. Rear guard circle when placed, you may soul blast one and choose one of your opponent's rear guards and return it to hand. If it was returned, your opponent has to discard a card from their hand. Now, this is, I mean, it's interesting because it's no, no longer binding, um, but instead it's like a bounce and force a discard. So if they had a perfect hand, they'll have to discard that rear guard, or if not, then they're discarding whatever. Um, it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's a soul blast one for essentially making them lose a unit on the board so if this is like you know against bermuda you can get rid of the interceptors and stuff obviously that's nice but like they still have the choice to discard whatever they want so they can just keep it for next turn and if it's an on play skill you just reactivated it so it's kind of a double-edged sword not necessarily that great but still pretty good for that but then the second skill is if your opponent's hand has four or less cards he gets plus 5k also during your opponent's turn so that's pretty relevant just because, I mean, it goes together with Jamia Kongo's skill, and therefore it is actually quite nice, at least for that. Next is Tendo Kongo. So, when retired from a front row rearguard circle during your opponent's turn, you may draw a card. So, if they attack it or retire it, not if they bind it, so that doesn't go off. Um, so, against Link Joker and Arakami, not, not doing that much actually. So, yeah keep that in mind but it is a free draw otherwise and then second skill is when road upon if your opponent's hand has four or less cards you can call him to rearguard circle so not that good this isn't like the tonic stinger which is already a card that's too slow to be played in the meta um where you actually get a bind from calling it but here it's literally just a free rearguard that doesn't really do much apart from when it's retired you draw an extra card so not really worth cutting away your precious grade 3 slots just for this honestly this is a pretty bad card next is finally a good card in Sewell. 
when placed on rearguard circle if your vanguard is jamyo kongo until end of turn he has plus 5k and when your opponent would call units of the guardian circle from hand for the battle that he attacked they must call two or more at the same time so what's nice about this is that there's no condition like the only condition is to have jamyo kongo as your vanguard but you essentially get a battle door it's on place plus 5k battle door for no other cost. I think that's actually quite nice. You can dedicate your Count Blast and Soul Blast to all other resources, whereas this guy just comes on the board and he's just a Musashi, but like only on place. But still, it's nice. Like there's no difficult condition to fulfill or anything. So I think that's actually pretty great uh, just for that, honestly. So I think this card is pretty good. The next one is Tsumuji Basho. Act Rearguard Circle once per turn, you may Soul Blast 1. Your opponent then chooses a card from their hand and discards it, and he has plus 10k instead of turn for each grade of that card. Your opponent reveals the top card of their deck and puts it into their hand. Now, this card I actually really like because, essentially, they are forced to discard 1. If they discard a grade 0, obviously this card doesn't gain power, but they just lost their most precious shield. Obviously, I mean, if they discard a draw trigger, that's fine, but... You know, if they don't run the non-PG draws, then they're losing out if they discard a grade 0. If they discard a grade 1, they're trading a 10k shield for 10k power, so they're still kind of losing out because they're still gaining power. Um, and then, I mean, if they discard grade 2 just to keep the shields, then you're going to gain more power than they have shield. But per se, I guess. Um, so this card is really good. Like it kind of has a bit of a mind gaming aspect, and there's just a bunch of things that you can do with it. Like if you catch them just having great threes in hand, then obviously like he's gonna gain a bunch of power. Um, so and sometimes they might want to because that's like the only dud in their hand. But like you know, then they risk this card getting 30k power, and that's also a problem. Um, but they do get to add a card back to hand, so you literally are doing it just to force them to discard something and then gain power off of it. So it's interesting. Thing. Again, if they run the non-PG draws, this literally kind of invalidates this card because it gains no power and they get to, like, discard one, draw one, essentially. So, yeah, this is a really good card. I like it a lot, um, but let's move on. Mizukaze has a skill when placed on rearguard circle. You may soul blast a grade three, and until end of turn, your opponent cannot call grades that he or she had called that turn from hand to guardian circle. So... This is interesting. Um, it says they can they can be called at the same time, and then it explains if a grade one was called, one cannot be called for the rest of the turn. So if they guard with a grade zero against a uh, attack, they can't guard with grade zeros anymore. It includes PGs, which is pretty deadly. If they guard with a grade one, no more grade ones, stuff like that. Honestly, because this is a turn wide ability, I think this card, like yes, it doesn't have a gift. So like let's let's just be upfront about that, but. You know, with future Nobutama support, I could see this card coming back at some point. And let's not forget about premium. Like, obviously this doesn't affect G-Guards, but it make, makes it so that they still have to be very, very careful. I mean, this isn't Murakumo, you know, it's not Axel, but like, even then, I feel like this is pretty strong. Just because like, you're already ripping away so many cards from their hand. The fact that you're able to then pressure them even more with this card is really good. So I think this card might come back, even if it doesn't have a gift, maybe as like a one or a two of, if there's kind of like searchability or something in the future, I can see this card making a, a reappearance. Next, we have Stealth Dragon Daidoku. When retired from Mirror Circle in your opponent's turn, you may draw a card. It's the same as the grade three uh, double rare. Again, I don't think it's worth running a, you know, one of your precious grade two slots just for this effect, in my opinion. But then the final card is Kokujo. Kokujio, I guess is maybe how you pronounce it. Uh, Rearguard Circle and Guardian Circle, when placed from hand, if your damage zone has no face-up cards, you counter charge one. This is cool because it's also a Guardian Circle, um, so, you know, just counter charging your opponent's turn is pretty cool. Like, Gridora, hello, goodbye. You know, you can just, like, counter charge before you go into your turn. I think this is actually a pretty cool effect. Um, I think Nobutama already has a counter charger, but obviously this is still very nice and very strong. So Nobutama is a mixed bag, I would say. Uh, some cards are pretty impressive, while some cards are really not enough um, for the current meta. So I think they held back a little bit just to go ham with the upcoming uh, Shin series support. So we'll see where that goes. But for now, the cards are looking pretty okay. Are you ready for the shortest segment of a set breakdown ever recorded? Because here we have gold with just three cards worth mentioning because the other two cards are triggers. So we have three cards for golds. Can you believe it? First card is the VR Blazing Lion Platina Azel. So 
This guy is pretty impressive. Um, I, as I've said in several videos now, gold is a deck that I struggled against in Japan with DP. So if you wanna, you know, if DP is a problem in your locals, um, which I mean, it's kind of weird to say that, but I've, I've seen people complain, um, you might wanna pick up golds. But anyway, let's go over Platina. So Platina has an act, Vanguard Circle. You make almost one and change this turn's first drive check to the following. Look at two cards on top of your deck, reveal one card from among them in your trigger zone, and call one card from among them to rear guard circle. So uh, it continues. If your soul has two or more grade three cards, change the second drive check of the turn and more as well. So this is really interesting because I mean, for standard, it's already cool. Like you get to change the drive checks, you get to decide whether you want to trigger something or add it to the field. Um, so you can trigger on calls and like, then like if you place a unit and a trigger at the same time like a front trigger or something it'll apply to all units um even the newly placed one uh, I, from what i remember um but to me what was quite interesting is that this card has really cool implications in premium too because you can use a skill and then go into the spear x and this changes the turns drive check not this units drive check so it's for this whole turn that you change it so like in that sense, because this deck can spam grade 3 super easily, especially in premium, um, well, maybe not post-restriction, it's a bit harder because Criff is limited, but with, like, still you have um, Wonder Azel to do that, but anyway, so having two or more grade 3s, or three grade 3s, to change every single drive check is pretty easy, I think, so with that being said, you can essentially mid-battle phase field another three units, and then change your drive checks to whatever you want them to be from those, you know, every time you look at two. And so I think that's really cool. The fact that you can do that in premium is honestly really nice. Spear X just became even better. Um, so because of that, I think this card is really, really nice in premium. Um, in standard, I think it's also really good. I think it's a great finisher. You don't want to go for it too early because Raven Haired Azel is one of the best pressure units. Um, for earlier when your opponents have like three-ish damage um and then when you push them to like four or five you go into the platina try to go for game um and that's it it's really really good because you can essentially get two new cards on the board and then potentially you know increase your trigger chances as well so platina is very good and next up we have the very well-known duo of golds that are hole and kaheda and uh they were in shadows for a little bit um during um the g era but now they're back in golds so kaheran's skill is one place on rearguard circle you make almost one and discard a card look at the top three of your deck call one card to rearguard circle from among them shuffle your deck and if you have a hole on your vanguard circle or rearguard circle you draw a card so vanguard circle isn't looking too likely unless you superior call this on turn one or something but then how do you have kind of so it's kind of like hmm but anyway um this is a nice effect because it's essentially kind of one to top three call one and then if hole is there like that mitigates the discarding so i think that's quite nice i honestly like that effect quite a bit but i think for you know context sake let's look at hole as well so whole skill is continuous your other unit in say columns this unit that was placed this turn gets 5k and if kaeda is on your vanguard or rearguard circle it gets 10k instead of 5k so it doesn't have to be on the same column as him but just anything that's in this column that was placed this turn gets an extra 10k if the kaheda is there so that's really strong because that's a big power pump to your field and at the same time you are looking for more units the cannon blast i mean it's kind of like the vivian just you don't need to soul blast instead you are just discarding but you do make up for that discard and it's more like a filter as long as you have hole so i think it's pretty good in that sense too so these three cards are all pretty good i think platina definitely shines the most i mean it is the vr but yeah so that's it for gold it's just three cards boohoo but aggravine is coming so it's okay and now it's time for main character power so um time to make up for overreacting to Gansalot. Uh, we're going to begin with him solitary knight Gansalot. once again the skill continuous all the blaster blades on your vanguard and rearguard circles get plus 10k power during your turn if your opponent's vanguard is grade 3 or greater, your front row circles with blaster blade on them become vanguard circles. Vanguard abilities activate and perform drive checks. So I had a video on this card kind of overreacting, thinking it does too much, um, when really it doesn't do much at all. All it does is give power and enforce a gimmick that turns into a ruling disaster. Um, I think still think the ruling disaster is a bit annoying, um, but apart from that, this card is good. It's definitely very good, but it's not OP in any means, I would say. Because, like, what's getting one extra drive check? You know, it's like 
not like we haven't seen that before, you know, and stuff like that. So I think it's fine in that sense. Um, I played against this deck quite a bit too. It's scary, it's very consistent. I think to me the scary thing wasn't so much Gancelot, but more the pieces that come with him from this, like the other two triple rares in this set that come with him, or like, wow. Um, so I think that's much scarier than Gancelot himself uh, because of how consistent the deck becomes, it's crazy. And then this as like, I don't know if I want to call this a win con, I think Exculpate is still kind of the win con, quote unquote. Uh, but this one is just like the best pushing power, the best grade 3 to go into for the most part of the game until your opponent's at 5 damage. And even then, it's still extra power and extra drive check with, you know, uh, on an attack. Um, so Gantelot is good, but there's a lot of rulings, uh, so make sure you check out W Slasher's video on VBTO5 rulings that cover all the intricate and weird things that happen with this card because it would take too long for me to cover everything, but yeah. Pretty simple skill in the sense that like it doesn't do that much um, apart from enable a gimmick, but like we need to look at the drawbacks of this card. You know, it's like cool, it's extra drive checks and stuff, but thing is, if you just have him and nothing else in your hand or field, it's jet just dead. Like it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything with Blaster Blade if you're bricking, not drawing the searchers, like not drawing anything worthwhile, and just like drawing other pieces then it's not doing anything, it's pretty sad, like, the whole deck just kind of crumbles, and it's pretty bad in that sense, but, you know, if you do get all your stuff and your Blaster Blades and stuff, then yeah, it's good, but keep in mind Narukami's around, they can bind your Blaster Blades, and then this deck kind of fizzles, because Exculpate needs Blaster Blade too, so, yeah, keep that in mind. Let's go over the very strong uh, support pieces. First, we have Gordon. During your turn, continuous Rear Circle effect, all the Blaster Blades on your Vanguard or Rear Circles get plus 5k. If your Blaster Blade is in the same column as this unit, this unit gets boost. So already it gives extra 5k on top of Gansla's 10k, which is, you might not think is that much, but that's already an extra, well, 20k shield you're asking your opponent to place on top of the base shield value, uh, base power values, which is already 20k if you're boosting with Gordon, or, you know, 18k if not. Um, but then, you know, you have like forces and stuff like that to consider. So usually that little power addition will lead up to a PG or a several, several card guard. Um, but then the other thing is, this guy boosts for 10k. Now you would think like, oh, you know, what's what's 10k? It's not that different from 20k. In the end, it is pretty annoying because thanks to the 5k that he gives the, like himself too, it's a 25, 35 with a Gancelot. That's, again, a heal doesn't guard that. And that's pretty annoying. And so it's a strong card. This is a really good card already. I didn't think much of this because I was like, what's boost on a grade two? But then it's really good. Seriously, it's really good. And then next we have Tristan, the best searcher in the deck. When placed on Rearguard Circle, if your Vanguard is grade 3 or greater, Cattle Must 1, search your deck for up to 1 Blaster Blade, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. So, just Cattle Must 1, search Blaster Blade as long as you're in grade 3. Like, it's really good. This is all the deck really needed, because this lets you search out the Blaster Blade, that way you don't need to top deck for Blaster Blade just to have Gancelot live. You can use Tristan, you can use the um, uh, Conjurer, of Mithril and stuff like that, so there's plenty of things to play to search out your Blaster Blades now, um, which does help quite a lot. Um, so yeah, Tristan is a very, very good card. Definitely not something to be underestimated. Next is Powerful Sage Byron. Vanguard and Rearguard Circle effect, when your other Rearguard is placed, he gets plus 3k. Uh, this isn't once per turn, so this can go up by, well, I mean, as much as you want to call. Even if you call more than 5, it's still going to keep going up, so it can be a pretty big attacker. But the second skill is more worthy of attention. Once per turn, act on Rearguard Circle. If your damage zone has more cards than your opponent's, you may Soul Blast 1 and discard a card from your hand to draw 2. This, I kind of like. It's not good in anything right now, I would say. Maybe in like a Soul Saver build, but this could be something in the future, you know? This card is okay. I mean, it's kind of like a, you know, you put it in the box kind of double rare. You don't really need to, you know, worry about trading this guy away because most people don't need him. But that second skill might see some use in the future or in some like rogue decks or just in budget builds, you know, because discard one for draw two is always going to be pretty good. That's why Nemain was played back when she first came out and back in the day. Um, but yeah, so I think Byron is actually pretty half decent. Second, um, next card is Great Sage Baron. Riga Circle once per turn, when your other unit attacks, you can have it gain plus 5k until end of battle. If the unit that got the 5k is grade 3 or greater, then you can count plus 1 and retire Baron to give it an extra crit. Now, this is actually pretty interesting because 
in something like Soul Saver, like giving this to a Palamedes is pretty strong because it's already slapping for huge numbers. Now you have that extra crit pressure to help out. And you don't have to, I mean, it's a once per turn effect, but you don't have to have it in the front row. You can just put it behind Vanguard or something if your Vanguard is massive and has like a force mark already to give that extra crit to the attacker. Or like, you know, you can have several of them on the board as well. It's once per turn, but you can still use several because it's once per turn per unit. Um, like per card, physical card. Um, so that's why I think this card is actually pretty okay. Obviously it does need Counter Blast, but this set did give Royals the Counter Charger, so there's that as well. Next up we have Soul Guiding Elf. When your opponent PGs from hand, if your Vanguard is grade 3 or greater, you may Counter Blast 1 and draw a card. I don't know why this needs to Counter Blast 1. Um, it's a bit too rough in the deck to Counter Blast a lot. Maybe they're like, oh, we gave them a Counter Charger so we can do anything. No, it's still pretty rough. So, I don't know. I think such a fringe scenario, it's like, okay, sure, against Protect, this will go off more often, but it's still such a fringe scenario. Like, I don't know, it feels a bit too specific, and this is a double rare, so not too sure. I like the art a lot, but not too sure. Next up is Hengist, or Hengist. When it attacks on Vanguard Circle, Soul Blast 2 grade 3s, call any number of cards from your hand to Rearguard Circle, and those units get plus 10 cancel end of turn. If you have 3 or more Rearguards, when your opponent would call units from Guardian, uh, from hand to Guardian Circle, then Battle Door. So, this, I mean, the reason why I'm talking about it is because it's an interesting budget deck card, because, I mean, it's a pretty hefty cost, Soul Blasting 2 grade 3s, but you get to call any th number you want, and they will get plus 10k, which is pretty huge, it's like a mini soul saver. And then on top of that, you can do a battle door effect for that turn, which is also quite strong, we've seen that from a lot of effects. This doesn't need any cow blast either, it's just soul blast of 2 grade 3s, so I think this card is actually half, like, half decent. I think it's actually half decent, definitely not nothing competitive, but for like budget players, pretty cool. Next up is Lamarack, I think a lot of people remember this guy, he was in the, the weird, uh, like, limit break era set with spectral duke as like a royal 10k vanilla because uh, that's all they got plus you know a, a limit break card but lamarack is pretty bad this time around if you have five or more units count plus one he gets plus 10k not that good it's not once per turn but why would you do that you know it's it's a counter blast like why would you do that so yeah again uh, no, not even for budget players you have better things to play come on Pure Bright Unicorn. When placed, if you have three front row units, you soul charge one, which is pretty okay. I mean, Soul Saver appreciates this. And then when placed, if you have five or more units, gets plus five cancel out of turn. So again, Soul Saver really likes this because it's good for the soul charge. It's good for extra power on the Soul Saver turn or even leading up to the Soul Saver turn. But I mean, five or more units probably will be only on that Soul Saver turn. So yeah, Soul Saver support. Let's just call it that. And finally, Pluck Enchanter. When your Blaster Blade is placed, Soul Charge 1. If you have no face-up cards and damage zone, Counter Charge 1 once per turn. This is what everybody wanted. They wanted their Counter Charger. Here you go, guys. Now it's just DP waiting. But, you yeah, know, this card is very good. Gives you a Soul Charge too, because we have quite a few skills that use the Soul now. Um, but the Counter Charge, obviously, is the real thing here. So... It's Blaster Blade locked, but I mean, what did you expect? It's Royals, basically Blaster Blade the Clan for now, until the Shin series. So, yeah, still very, very good card. Very much needed. Next up is Filled Feather Dragon. Rearguard Circle Act, Count Blast 1 and Soul Blast 3. Then you draw e cards equal to the number of your open Rearguard Circles and call the same number of cards from hand to Rearguard Circles. So, this card, I obviously would have skimmed over normally, but then while I was in Japan, one of the players was showing me their Gansalot build, and they were playing one copy of this, just because clans like Kagero and Narukami and stuff like that is pretty popular right now. And so he was thinking, well, if I get nuked, and if, you know, my board's empty, or if I'm bricking, this card's actually not bad, because it's a Kamas 1 and Soulblast 3 for potentially, you know, for four cards in hand and then sure it has to call the same number but if you saved up a few other cards you don't have to call those specific four you can call up the field that you were gonna call anyway so i see the use of this card it lacking a marker is a bit worrying but i mean there's been plenty of other cards that don't have a marker that are still very good so i think this card's half decent um might see some use in some decks here and there uh but yeah it's interesting uh to say the least Next up is Corin from Fire Emblem Fates, so Loading Angel, Auto Rearguard Circle at the end of your turn if you have 5 or more units, count on boss 1, put him in soul, draw 2. 
Again, this is a good card, but what I didn't realize is that this card is good in alt mile, and this was actually because we saw a top for alt mile recently in I think BCS Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think it was Mexico. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, but thing is, this is good because you can be on Brave the whole turn and just, you know, have five or less cards in hand. But then at the end of the turn, after your drive checks and after a bunch of cards have resolved and you have, um, you know, your full field still, you can come as one, slide him into soul and draw two. And that way you can survive the next turn and then go back into Brave. So this card is good. I honestly think this card is really nice. And so, yeah, I think the little interaction with Alt Mile is interesting. Not sure if it's enough to put Alt Mile into really like the the best decks of the meta tier, but I mean, maybe post ban list, it will get better. I just didn't think about that enough before when I first saw this card, so definitely very nice. And then almost finally, Synegils, Synegils, I don't know, but when it attacks or boosts, if your Vanguard is grade 3 or greater, Soul Blast 1 and he gets plus 10 k as a lot of turn. It's nice, I think. Like again, for a budget build, this is actually pretty okay. Soul Blast 1 for 10k is better than Kamas 1 for 10k, like um, what was our 10k friend again, Lamarack. So it's better in that sense, but I mean, still nothing too fancy, it's just something maybe I don't even, no, I don't think even foot budget players should play this, honestly. Like, budget players can afford better things these days. But, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, not so much. But anyway, normally I don't shout out starters and stuff, and I just skip over the cards that are repetitive. But, you know, I can't skip my boy Barkle. They brought back Barkle. He's just your basic starter, the same as always, but it's Barkle. Come on. Like, it's, like, I'm just happy seeing Barkle back. It's so nice to see the boy back. Never restricted ever again. Uh, just because, I mean, he's just a basic starter, but if you're playing Royals, you better be playing Barkle. This is the real G. Moving on, we have the Shaman King support for OTT in the new and improved Tsukuyomi. So, quite a few cards to look at for OTT. We're going to take a little bit of a different order this time because of the way that the Tsukuyomi cards work, and I want to co cover them in the order that I prefer. Um, so... God of Hogo Ichibiyoshi. Ichibiyoshi is the starter, but it's the same starter as always, so not even worth talking about. But starting off, we have Goddess of the Crescent Moon Tsukuyomi, which is the grade 1. So, Vanguard Circle Auto. At the beginning of your ride phase, if God of Hogo Ichibiyoshi is in your soul, look at the top 5 of your deck, put one of them into your hand, the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order, and discard a card from your hand. If you discarded Goddess of the Half Moon Tsukuyomi, ride it as stand, and you cannot ride this turn. So, how this works is... You start the game, you write into her, pass. Then, next turn, bef like you do your stand and draw, and then, beginning of ride phase, you check the top five, and then you add, I mean, hopefully, if you don't have it, the goddess of half moon, if you already have it, then you can add whatever you want, but then you have to discard the half moon to ride. So you skip your ride, essentially, by riding up through the gimmick and getting more Tsukuyomis in your soul, which is the point of this deck. So you get into half moon Tsukuyomi. So th what this one does is, again, beginning of your ride phase, you look at the top five. This one doesn't actually care about your soul. So the last one cared about having Ichibyoshi in the soul. This one doesn't care. So beginning of ride phase, look at the top five. Put one into your hand, rest on the bottom of your deck in any order, discard a card from hand. Then if you discarded the Goddess of the Full Moon Tsukuyomi, you ride her, and then again you can't ride this turn. So, same thing as the Half Moon, but going into the Full Moon. And then her continuous skill is Vanguard and Vanguard Circle during the battle that attacked the Vanguard. If the Crescent Moon Tsukuyomi is in your soul, this unit gets plus 3k. So, this one does care about what's in your soul, but at least the ride up skill does not. So. What is nice about this is that obviously you are saving cards from in your hand to not write up, just like the old Tsukuyomi. And just like the old Tsukuyomi, you're stacking the bottom of the deck. So we've seen eight cards so far that stack the bottom of the deck and let you peer into the future of what the end game will be if you can dig into that uh, pile fast enough. So this is cool because it all leads up to the VR for OTT, which is Goddess of the Full Moon Tsukuyomi. So, what she does is act Vanguard Circle once per turn. You can almost one and discard a card. You choose up to three cards of Tsukuyomi and their card names from your soul and draw cards equal to the number of cards chosen. If you drew three, you look at the top five, put two on top of your deck in any order and the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. And then the auto Vanguard skill, when you reveal two or more triggers in your drive check, for this turn, three of your front row units get plus 10k. So this is cool because you essentially get to 
look at this. So you write up to her first, you have two. So you just draw two, you don't get to do the rest of the skill. But the next turn, you ride into the full moon again. Or if you were lucky, you soul charged with Euryole into another Tsukuyomi, and now you have three Tsukuyomis in your soul. And then, because of that, you're able to fulfill the second condition, which is to look at top five, stack uh, the two, which is your, your drive check, basically, and then leave the other three on bottom. So now we know 11 cards in the bottom of the deck, and we can do this every single turn. So next turn, we're going to know another three. So it's going to be 14, 17, 20. By the time you reach 20, like, you should be there, like, I don't know, like, turn four or five, basically. I mean, no, not turn four or five. That doesn't add up. But, I mean, you get what I mean, I think. But this card is very good. It's just free draws, a lot of pressure, and I mean, if you can play to give me right, you will be able to remember the bottom of the deck and take advantage of it, which is what the deck is supposed to do. So now let's take a look at some of the supporting cards. We have Evil Eye Princess Euryole. At first, nobody played her, and then people realized that she's actually quite good. Uh, so, back in the rearguard circle, when you look at your deck by an effect during your turn, you may soul charge one. This is once per turn, so you will soul charge every single time. What's nice is that this is a two-fold, like, advantage one you soul charge for potentially finding a tsukuyomi you play what well, 12 in your deck so it's quite a lot um so that's gonna help and then if you soul charge grade threes then you can use them for the deer which is also perfect so it's fast soul charging every time you look at the deck you can do it so when you look at the deck with tsukuyomi skill when you look at the deck with you know whatever else we're going to take a look at skill or you know what you already played skill uh you get to soul charge and so that's very cool so that's already very good her second skill is just vanguard circle when your attack hits you can come out to drop two you preferably don't write into her but if you have to then there's that like at least you have something and then they're forced to pg it if they don't want you to plus so it's a pretty okay backup ride um she got a lot more thick since her last iteration so that's something it's actually the same artist too which is pretty interesting they, like it's literally the same artist as the old one but yeah Euryole is much better than we initially expected she's actually played quite a lot next up is Macaron so the battle sister once we turn regret circle effect when you look at your deck by an effect during your turn you may have this unique at plus 10k on a turn so once per turn only 10k but it's a 19k attack with a boost that's going to be a 27 you know already hitting magic numbers against axel and protect with a little bit of an extra uh you know or a big extra from tsukuyomi that's going to be hitting for pretty threatening numbers then maiden of libra got remade rebooted um so i was quite nostalgic after playing vanguard zero but it's nice that she's back so vanguard rearguard circle at the end of the battle that she attacked the vanguard while boosted you can count us one to draw a card no longer has to hit to count us two to draw one now it's just like amber clone basically end of battle after being boosted very nice so pretty cool it helps you reach into your stack faster the soul charge of Eurioli is the same actually i should have mentioned that uh Eurioli soul charge helps you reach your stack faster so you're kind of intentionally decking yourself out but you know your bottom of the deck so you know when your wind cotton is going to be there you can calculate it carefully and that's really good and then libra's other skill is just discard a card to give her 10k so when you want to do that late game push you can sacrifice a bit more resources to push a bit harder then, um, Magus got some support with Fusili Magus, so this is just Dysaurus, but a rare. So Vanguard and Rearguard Circle skill, once per turn, you become plus one, so plus one. Whenever Vanguard with Magus and his card name gets 10k power and drive plus one until end of turn. So if you have two of these and use the skill twice, then they get two extra drive checks. So on the VR Magus, this is very, very good. Uh, actually, some Magus lists have been topping again, which is pretty interesting. So like magus is making a comeback which is definitely pretty nice and appreciated then we have some tsukuyomi support cards so we have convoy angel uh this card is when she's discarded you can put her into your soul um so basically whether you're discarding for a cost or if like i mean like for maiden of libra for example that way you're kind of mitigating the minus which is definitely very cool so you get a soul charge which you can then use for something else so that's good too and then there's diviner angel which is when she's discarded from hand during your turn you can almost want to draw a card so again when you discard her for something like that you get to draw an extra card or it's like if you didn't get a uh, tsukuyomi and you just choose to discard one of these instead you get to use those effects so quite a few applications i'm not sure if they're being played or not i haven't really paid attention to these two in particular i know one card for sure that is being played is the white hair of inaba this is directly tsukuyomi support so at the end of the battle that she boosted a grade 3 vanguard you put a card from your hand into the soul as a cost and draw a card so this is not that great because it 
can only work when it boosts to grade 3, and you can't, like, Tsukuyomi's skill is an act, so you use this before the battle phase, even if you put another Tsukuyomi into the soul with his skill, like, you could have just re rode and then had three Tsukuyomis, but if you don't, this will help you fix them, if you missed the Tsukuyomi grade 1 and 2, this will help you fix it, so it's nice because it's a put a card into soul to draw one, so you don't lose out on anything, and you're just doing yourself a favor, so it's a good card, definitely worth playing. Then we have quite a few wishes as well, we have Brilliant Witch Popo, uh, so here comes the Popo with very nice art. When she attacks, if your deck has 10 or less cards until end of that battle, she gets plus 10k and your opponent can only guard with grade zeros. So pretty interesting, I mean they can still PG, this might be a bit better in premium to that extent, uh, but I mean OTT in premium is going to be pretty dead in the coming two weeks uh, because of the restriction list, so enjoy this while you can, but it's nice, it's a pretty nice effect considering it's free and getting effects that work off of almost decking out is also pretty cool. Next up is Ravioli Magus. When you drive check a trigger, she gets plus 10k until end of turn, once per turn. So pretty simple effect, nothing too fancy, works in every OTT build. So yeah, I'd say Ravioli isn't all that special, it's just a simple 10k power buff for those big pushing turns, but I don't think she necessarily replaces anything in the deck for now. Next up is Solid Cond, Chond, Wizard. When you look at your deck by an effect, you soul blast one, and then he gets plus five kills on of turn. It's not once per turn, so this can lead up to a pretty big power buff. Uh, only thing is, I mean, I don't know which deck you would use this in because Tsukiyomi cares about the soul very much. Um, maybe if you're still playing Imperial Daughter Amaterasu, or if you're, you know, playing Magus, maybe, but I think apart from that, this card doesn't have as much use, but it's an interesting effect nevertheless. And then finally, we have Penny Magus, so while wow, she actually has the Penny, like, pasta around her, that's, I didn't even, wow, I didn't realize that at first, that's, that's ama amazing attention to detail. Actually, does the Ravioli one have that? No, she does not have Ravioli around her, but... Okay, but Penne here uh, gets 5k when you check a trigger, which is pretty good. Um, it's also pretty nice for Tsukuyomi, I guess, because you get power in the front row for triggers, and then this gets, you know, 10k if you get a double trigger. Um, so that's pretty good. Whereas, like, I guess in any deck it's pretty usable, but again, grade ones are pretty limited, but I think she could actually see some play, but I'm still shook by the art, man, god. All right, so that's it for OTT. OTT is definitely very good from this set. Uh, at first it didn't seem to make such big results just because people were playing Tsukuyomi with Imperial Daughter and then they started playing the Aureole and I think that's when the deck really started popping off as it was supposed to. So I think the deck is honestly really good. It's very strong. Um, it's got a lot of um, consistency and a good win con. So I think it's going to see some good results going forward. All right, we're finally on the last section. If you haven't noticed, also, I've been using my, you know, phone mic here again because I'm still on holiday in the US. This will be the last set breakdown that I record here, so don't worry, it's going to go back to usual quality soon. Um, other than that, I hope you've been enjoying the pre-recorded videos I've been posting here and there. But anyway, let's get into Narukami, the highlight of this set, my favorite as well. I mean, the only clan from this set that I actually play. Um, but Narukami is definitely very good from this set. It got some amazing support. It was already quite strong because it was countering Bermuda, but then with this support, it just went ham like this now can play against a lot of force clans easily it dominates the axel matchups just because like if they have a full field it nukes it if they have an empty field like pale moon then it takes advantage of it so really really good honestly this deck is just wild so let's take a look at the vr the strongest uh grade three here eradicator gauntlet buster dragon so Vanguard Circle continuous during your turn, he gets plus 5k and a crit for each of your opponent's front row rearguard circles. So you might be thinking, well, that's just a plus 10k plus 2 crit against most decks, yes, but against Axel, for each open Axel circle they have, that's an extra 5k and an extra crit. Against Azel, that sets up like like four front row units against you before you're even on grade 3, you ride into this, pop their front row with a second skill, and then there you go. You have a bunch of crit and power to OTK them with. So let's take a look at that second skill, Vanguard Circle Act. You make Hamas 1 and discard 1. You bind all of your opponent's front row rearguards, and you may move all of your opponent's back row rearguards to a rearguard circle in the same column. So not only does it pop everything, it also pulls everything except for what's behind the Vanguard Circle up into the front. So you can swipe it with the other units they have in your deck, and trust me, there is plenty. 
So this card, really good, as I said. It just wipes out a bunch of Axel decks. Even non-Axel decks, it's still good. Maybe you don't want to use the second skill against, like, Force and Protect, just because you can take care of uh, their stuff with your other cards that use less resources, whether it's, like, Soul Blasting or just Counter Blasting 1, but not necessarily having to discard. But regardless, this is really good, because it's a Counter Blast 1, discard 1 for a you know conversion of at least two usually you wouldn't use this if your opponent only has one regard in the front obviously but we are in an axel meta right now like narukami is part of the meta pale moon is coming up it's going to be definitely a popular deck at the very least and then on top of that you know azel is still quite popular aqua force is still popular so decks like that are going to stay and the touch guys is coming up as well so i think narukami is going to have a very comfortable seat in the meta for standard for a very long time so this deck and card itself is just very very good it, all it needs is the power increment and the extra crit i would like to say though that against force clans um even if they wipe out your front row it's just swinging for a 22k with plus two crit you know potentially more with a boost but it's quite easy to guard and then like you don't even need a pg if you're playing dp or something because you can guard with like a heal and a grade three or something and you're generally safe um so that's just something to keep in mind like this card is very very good another thing i should note is that it's interesting that in the set like what i like a lot about this set is that they start introducing cards like Gansalot that actually only work on turn like turn three if you go second turn four if you go first um but it's nice because it's the first time they printed great threes that reward you for going second but then you know so then we saw like tsukuyomi and stuff and it was like oh this is more of those like you know turn four cards but like tsukuyomi does want you to go first more than second i guess so i guess it's really only against a lot for this set i mean until the next one but then they go and print golem buster in the same set which is literally like i go first i swing with big numbers and then like you can really steamroll from turn three onwards so it's an interesting mix <clears throat> This is a very aggressive, like, right as early as possible card. So it's interesting that they did that. But yeah, Golem Buster is very good. Up next is the one triple rare that Narukami gets, that is Cho. So when placed on Vanguard in the rearguard circle, you may count must one to choose a column, bind the opponent's front row rearguard in that column, and then move up the back row rearguard behind that unit into the front row. So kind of does a similar thing as uh, Golem Buster, but just for one unit. But that's still very good because the count must one that converts into a bind and a move up so that like you know you don't have to run like ricky anymore that like would pull up i mean swap all the positions because a lot of cards now like golden buster and chuo switch positions of your opponent's units so that's very good and then second skill is rearguard circle once per turn at the end of the battle that your vanguard attacked if your opponent's front row has no rearguards you may count as one and stand this unit this skill is really good like this one i especially like because it's like you can essentially like attack with everything and then stack triggers on the Cho, and then after the Vanguard's battle, you can restart the Cho and still swing, and I think that's really nice. It is once per turn, but you can use it twice. For example, if you have two Cho's on the board on like the axles or something, so definitely very good. Um, the condition is pretty easy to fulfill because this deck just takes care of the front row super easily. So yeah, really good card. Obviously, it is a bit of a counter blast sync, but I mean. Even with that considered, it's just really strong. Next, Thunderbreak Dragon makes a return. If your opponent's Vanguard is grade 3 or greater, when this unit would attack, if it battles all of your opponent's front row units in one attack. So it's Vermilion without a cost, but it is slower because it's only when your opponent's Vanguard is grade 3 or greater. So it's kind of like Gansalot, where I said there's cards in this set that benefit you going second or you know otherwise they're a bit too slow going first so this is again one of those cards it's interesting that they made it a vermilion but just free <laughs> i mean they could have just made vermilion free but guess not but then the second skill is act vanguard and rearguard circle once return you may count must one and your opponent moves each of their back row rearguards to open front row and it says in brackets they may move diagonally so what this means is they have to also move their behind the vanguard unit as well because until now people playing as narukami were always safe calling down a booster behind the vanguard because there was no way they could actually grab it like you could always grab the thing behind and then move it up but this allows you to move diagonally meaning that your opponent has to move everything in their back row to open front row rearguard circles so you have to take care of the front row first in order to be able to pull them up but Thunderbreak making it possible to pull up behind the Vanguard means that even if you don't play Thunderbreak, if the opponent like knows Narukami well enough, they might think like, hmm, there's a chance he might play like one or two. This is a rearguard circle skill on top of it being a Vanguard circle skill, so there's a chance that they might have to, you know, lose one of their precious uh, boosters to this guy. So 
this it's a good card it's a good card i think like especially for budget builds there's even a supporting card for it that we can look at it now which is the rai rai so her skill is vanguard and rearguard circle when her attack or the attack she boosted hits a vanguard you include top seven then reveal up to one thunderbreak dragon and put it into your hand and then if you put a card into your hand and she's on a rearguard circle put her into the soul it's pretty nice because it's free and it's a search uh you don't really play her right now because thunderbreak is good in its own deck like as a budget deck for narukami which is again a pretty pleasant thing to have but thing is like in the competitive like golden buster plus the detonics deck it's not all that sought after some people play like one or two but then they don't play the right eye because there's a lot of other good great ones to play instead so that's something to keep in mind then we have another nostalgic card in supreme army eradicator zuitan so his first skill is a power pump when your opponent's rear guard is bound during your turn this unit and all of your golden buster dragons on vanguard and rear guard circles get plus 5k until end of turn so that's also very good because this is going to power pump himself and your vanguard and also any golden busters on the other sides of the field whenever something is bound which i mean you will be doing quite a bit against an axel matchup that's going to be huge because this will turn both him and your golden buster into just massive powerhouses so that's something to keep in mind and then for force matchups i mean there's only a 10k bonus but that already turns it into a 32 meaning it's a bit harder so that's where you have to like drop a heal in a grade 3 to actually try to protect it otherwise 22 not that big of a threat against force so this is a really really good card still has a second skill though which is at the end of battle they attack the vanguard and rearguard circle if your opponent's front row has no rear guards you may put him into your soul to draw a card so it's kind of like the coral assault um where it has a condition but instead of being at the end of turn it's at the end of battle that it attacked um which is still really good because this is just you know feeding your soul we have a lot of effects as always to like death scythe and stuff to uh soul blast so zoetan is really good for that because he'll give you extra soul and give you a card in hand so and i mean he is a useful card but you play him four times therefore you'll be probably drawing him for the next turn anyway um so really really good card honestly definitely worth playing all right getting into the rares and below so this is gonna get a bit faster here so first we have lance shocker dragon so this is a really pretty but not that amazing card he has an act, count plus one, soul plus one, choose when you put in front of rear guards and bind it. And if it was bound, two of your units in the same column as that unit, get plus five K until end of turn. So it's not the same as this unit, but as that unit that you bound. Um, he's pretty nice in some aspects, I mean, apart from the art, um, just because he does give an extra power bonus on top of binding. But when you look at cards like Death Scythe, like, I mean, this is a grade three, so that's even worse. But if this was on a grade two, like, it being good obviously but i feel like death scythe already does almost the same as this for about the same cost uh less if you take out the canvas but that's just what i think it's not the most impressive but it looks pretty impressive next up we have castor so this is a pretty well remembered i think uh grade one from eradicators when placed on rearguard circle you may discard a card and then you choose when you want its front row rear guards and bind it and then he gets plus five k until end of turn so actually a pretty nice card i mean you convert a discard into a bind and a power bonus so i think he's one of the nicer grade ones there's quite a few grade ones in the set that are quite playable i think this is one of them i don't know how much play it actually got because i mean you're discarding for golden buster already so maybe it's not that great but nevertheless it's still a pretty good skill and i think it will see some use it's also nice and premium because i mean well i mean narukami premium isn't all that great to be honest but it is nice just for the fact that it's still a discard for a bind when you run out of resources that's pretty good Another weird one that I've seen quite a few people run is the Desert Gunner Gaiban. At the end of the battle, your Vanguard attacked, you choose one of your units and give it plus three cancel end of turn, and your opponent cannot guard with Sentinels from hand for the battle that the unit attacked that you chose with this skill. So this is pretty interesting because it's after the Vanguard attack, so you can't give it to something like Cho'o because like if you want to like use the skill twice or something, because this will essentially only work after the Vanguard attacks, and Cho'o also checks after the Vanguard attacks, and you can't give it to the Vanguard either because I mean that would be pretty strong and considering it's free, it's not even an unplaced, it's just like when it's on the board it happens. So every turn technically you're able to give one of your units a no pg effect which is pretty strong considering it's for free so i think gaiban is actually pretty good grade one because this affects um protect decks as well so they can't protect they have to just hard guard from hand and if you put this on a card like um the zuitan that's gonna be huge you know because zuitan is just getting massive power and gaiban on top of zuitan is just gonna be a really uh threatening column because the 3k buff will also be really good against the axle and protect decks because that turns it into a uh, magical number and so yeah gaiban very good grade one definitely worth considering to use 
Then we have Blat Arrow Dragon. This looks like Blat, which is a, well, swear word in Russian and Lithuanian and most Slavic languages. Uh, but anyway, uh, what he does is during his turn, or your turn rather, if he's on an axle circle, he gets plus 5k, continuous. Uh, I mean, he doesn't have an axle circle himself, but he has an effect on the axle circle. But the main uh, attractive point of him is the second skill, which is when he attacks, your opponent's auto abilities do not activate, which means PGs do not activate. So it's almost the same as the previous, the... Uh, Gaiban that we looked at because that one just like nullifies sentinels um or like he doesn't allow them to guard with sentinels where this one nullifies sentinels so it's the same thing it just doesn't allow for sentinels to be placed i mean it's cool um but this is also nice in premium because there it also null uh, nullifies the g guards but only for this battle so it's not too crazy but being able to nullify g guards is interesting there's no other condition so maybe there could be some interesting narukami build in the future for premium where you actually run a lot of this guy and then you basically just like attack with him several times per turn and then not let them like use their g guards or pgs and you're basically running this like weird pseudo ichikishima deck that is actually quite an interesting com concept i think it's not as consistent but it's pretty interesting then we have turning bash dragon i think this card is really good for a common especially when he attacks if your opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater you may soul blast one to bind your opponent's front or rear guard so it binds for a soul blast one which is huge like that's i think the cheapest cost they've ever given to a bind apart from like the discard um but yeah like i think this is really good the only downside is that it has to wait for the opponent to be at grade three or higher so it's not as useful as some of the other grade twos that can bind regardless of what stage of the game you are in so they have more early game power but depending on where the meta shifts into this card might see a lot of use because it it doesn't have like weird stats or anything this could have easily been a rare or even a double rare maybe um but i mean maybe not a double rare uh the grade three condition is a little bit harsh but it's a really good card really good all right next up is zubair uh, zubat's cousin when placed by one of your rear guards this is interesting i mean it looks like a cost but you can just call this before you call anything else if you have an empty board and you don't need to pay the cost because the second skill gives him a plus 10k during your turn now whether this is worth it or not honestly not really um especially if you are forced to bind your own stuff then definitely not i mean it's just the 19k so i don't know it doesn't feel that substantial because considering you can run stuff like zuitan considering you have a bunch of other options that gain power like the death scythe so don't think it's worth it but an interesting card nonetheless next up is doran when you discard a card from your hand for the cost of your vanguard's ability if he's in the front row you can soul blast to to draw a card he's actually not bad the 8k base is a little bit of a problem but apart from that he's interesting because he converts your soul that i mean death scythe is using into well drawing extra cards which is pretty nice um i don't know how good this would be because i mean you need that soul for death scythe as i said and like you you don't want to be just like wasting it on whatever so i think in that sense it's okay i don't think it's really um you need to run him because also the grade two slots in this deck are really really tight so yeah don't think it's gonna be run Next is Bolt Capture Dragon. When placed in rearguard circle, opponent chooses one of their back row rearguards and moves it to an open front row. So if you're able to get rid of all the back row rearguards, including, you know, what's behind the actual columns, then you can grab the thing behind the vanguard as well. So this is the next card, or actually I think the last card of the other two that can grab stuff behind the vanguard. But I mean, this one is a grade one, so it's a bit easier to splash than a grade three. But I mean, still it's a thing that exists it's also free but this one comes with a catch as well that you have to basically get rid of not just the front row stuff but everything in the back row so everything in the back row must be gone already and then you can pull up the vanguard circle resting one so that like when you want to go into the detonics uh drill dragon you can actually discard zero to restand him so that's pretty nice but apart from that this card is pretty good and finally, we have Jin of 100 Thunderclaps. During your turn, if your opponent's damage zone has four more cards, he gets plus 10k. So if you rush your opponent, you get a benefit. So pretty okay. I mean, Will Smith over here is looking all right, but the card's not super amazing. It's also 7k base, so that 17k boost is okay at best and it depends on your opponent as well so i mean it depends on your opponent but it's you know, I mean damage is something you control so in that sense it depends on you but if they heal then it suddenly turns off so I'm not a big fan of this and again there's a lot of good grade ones in this clan that like even in set we already saw stuff like the guy gaiban that you would rather play instead so i don't think that this card really has a space in the deck so that's actually going to be it for the narukami section obviously a super strong clan out of the set as you can see from all these new cards it's really really good it's going to be really strong if you're going to any bcs's after the release of vbto5 definitely take it i think vbto6 as well you can get rid of blaster darks you can get rid of well pale moon gets rid of their own field 
uh, and back into the soul, but they leave a bunch of front row open for you to take advantage of. So Golden Buster still shines very well in that matchup. So honestly, I think Narcami is going to be good for a really long time. So if you invested in it, hold on tight because I don't think you're going to need a new deck for quite some time. So definitely very good clan and very good support. And that's going to be it for this set. So it's just a little bit of a delay. I do apologize, but you know, better late than never. So I think this set is honestly really good. It's a fresh experience. I really enjoy playing against these clans in Japan, uh, getting some first testing. I haven't touched anything from VP206 yet since I'm still on holiday. When I get back, you know, that's when that starts, especially with Vanguard DX's release. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Even when they are delayed, these set breakdowns, I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate your support. And honestly, like if you have opinions and stuff like that, feel free to say them in the comments. I know most of you enjoy these videos as like a podcast kind of thing, just like have it playing in your background. But regardless, I really appreciate it. And honestly, like you're support means a lot to me so thank you so much so that's gonna be for me today check out all the stuff in the description hit the bell button etc i'll see you guys next time bye bye